In the first video, we looked at equations in both parametric and Cartesian form. For either algebraic manipulation or trig identities, we can convert a parametric equation to Cartesian form by eliminating the parameter. This means we go from having three variables, x, y and t, or theta, to having two, just x and y. Eliminating the parameter means the equation only considers the relationship between x and y. This can have some drawbacks. An example might be the flight of a projectile. In Cartesian form, we can describe its position in terms of its horizontal and vertical displacement, i.e. the x and y coordinates, but we can't consider where it is at certain times. So all we've got now is the vertical and horizontal displacement, and we've lost information about the time. As outlined in the first video, it's a lot easier most of the time to go from parametric to Cartesian form than from Cartesian to parametric. So what we're going to do in the video is work through a few different examples and look at converting from parametric to Cartesian form. Let's start with a nice straightforward example. Let's go for x is equal to, and I'm just going to choose these as we go, we'll go for 2t and then we'll say y is equal to t squared minus 1. The question might ask us now, by elim eliminating the parameter t, express this in Cartesian form where y is a function of x. Something along those lines. So let's consider now x. What we've got is x is equal to 2t. Therefore, what we can say from here now is that x over 2 is equal to t. So x over 2 is equal to t. We can now sub this in. So taking now the parametric equations, I can eliminate the parameter by simply now putting t into the second equation. So we'll have y is equal to t squared. So that's going to be now x over 2. We're going to square that term and then subtract away 1. So we'll have y is equal to 1 quarter x squared minus 1. y is a function of x. So I can explicitly define y in terms of x like so. Now we can see that this is going to be a quadratic equation and it will be a parabola and we'll have now a point of intersection on the y-axis of minus 1. What we're going to do whilst we're here, we're going to look at a bit of work between Cartesian and parametric form. So this isn't part of a video as such, but it will give us some idea now on future work. So what I'm going to draw now is the parabola and the parabola looks something like so. So this is going to be the point now and we can see that we're going to have here now 0, comma, minus 1. Let's say we were just given this now and we were asked to uh, just sketch the curve and plot on now the values. So if we consider now the x-axis, we've got the x-axis here, the y-axis here, and we consider now the, uh, the points where y is not, i.e. where it crosses the x-axis. Well, that's going to be 0 is equal to 1 quarter x squared minus 1. So x squared is going to be equal to adding 1 to both sides and multiplying by 4. x is going to be equal, x squared will be equal to 4. x will be equal to plus or minus square root of 4, which is 2. So this would now be 2 naught, and this would be, uh, so minus 2 naught, and this would be uh, 2 naught. So that's what we've got. We've got y is equal to 1 over 4 x squared minus 1. So this is now in Cartesian form. Let's say I didn't go ahead now and convert this to Cartesian form. Let's consider in parametric form. We could say when it crosses the x-axis, this right here, y, would be equal to naught. So naught would be equal to t squared minus 1. Adding 1 and square rooting, t would be equal to plus or minus 1. We can see now when t is equal to 1, x will be equal to 2 lots of that. So x will be equal to 2. We can see that when t is equal to minus 1, we can set that in, x will be equal to minus 2. So you can see we're getting exactly the same information this way round. We can see that when x is naught, so we can say now when x is naught on here, so x equals 0, t is equal to 0. That's just considering now the y intercept. If t is equal to 0, we can sub it back in here and we can get y is equal to now 0 minus 1. And of course, that corresponds to the point just here. So we can see if we're asked to work between Cartesian and parametric form, there is a clear relationship between the two. OK, so all we were asked to do was convert it. I did that just here. So we could have stopped doing the question at this point, 
just here. But I wanted to go on and look now at some work when we've got both uh, Cartesian and parametric form. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's say we had some parametric equations and we said now that x was equal to, we'll just go for 1 minus t over t and we might have y is equal to, let's say, 1 plus t over t. So let's have those. We'll say now that t cannot be equal to 0. Okay, so let's go ahead with x. What I can do now is multiply through by t. So we can say xt will be equal to 1 minus t. I can add the t to both sides. xt plus t is equal to 1. Factoring the t out, t x plus 1 is equal to 1. So we can say t is equal to 1 over x plus 1. So all I've done is made t the subject. I can now go ahead and sub it in here. So y will be equal to 1 plus t. Well, t is 1 over x plus 1. And then, now in the denominator, I'm going to have t, which is going to be 1 over x plus 1. If I now multiply through by x plus 1, we're going to have now y is equal to one lot now of x plus 1. The x plus 1s will cancel, leaving us now just plus 1. And then in the denominator, the x plus 1s are going to cancel and we're just going to have 1. So from here, we can see that that's simply going to give us y is equal to x plus 2. And we have a straightforward linear equation. So all I've done now is converted between the two and written t. Now, in relation to x, I've made t the subject and subbed it in. OK, let's go for another one. Let's say we've got um, x is equal to 2 sine theta. And let's say we've got y is equal to, and we'll go for cos 2 theta. So in this particular case, we don't use algebraic manipulation. We use trig identities. x is a function of theta. y is a function of theta. I'm going to write just here to the examiner, cos 2 theta can be given now as 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So if I consider right here, what we can say from here, that x over 2 is equal to sine theta. So subbing it in here, y will be equal to 1 minus 2 lots of x over 2, and we need to square that. So that's going to give me y is equal to 1. That will be x squared over 4, so we're going to have 1 minus now 1 half x squared. And again, we end up with a parabola. It's not always the case that we end up with a parabola, but often in these ones we will do. So that's a nice example of using trig identities to find the Cartesian equation that now is independent of theta. Let's do another trig one. Let's go for um, let's go for x is equal to. So let's say x is equal to uh, cos theta, and we might have y is equal to. Let's go for tan squared theta. Okay, let's look at using an identity. We know that sec squared theta will be equal to tan squared theta plus 1. So I'm going to rely on this right here. If we consider now, what we can say is 1 over x will be equal to 1 over cos theta. All I'm doing is considering x. And then what we'll have as well, and again, theta in this particular case will have to be, um, we'll have to have some uh, restriction on theta to allow this to happen. And then what we can write is 1 over x is equal to sec theta. OK, I'm going to rely on this right here. OK, so what we've got is the following. 1 over x is sec theta. So if I rearrange this, I can say sec squared theta minus 1 is equal to tan squared theta. So I'm simply going to write in now that y will be equal to sec squared theta, which is going to be 1 over x. We square this term and now we subtract away 1. So we can see from here that y is equal to 1 over x squared minus 1. So that's what we have and we can write this now as y is a function of x. So 1 over x squared minus 1 and again we would have to consider now that in this particular case x could not be 0. This is just converting. If you are given some uh, more information to deal with, you will be given restrictions on both x and theta if applicable. So there we go. We end up now with 1 over x squared minus 1. So y is a function of x. 
Okay, let's have a look at another one. Let's go for, um, let's try x is equal to, let's go for 1 plus 3 cos theta and then y is equal to, let's say, 2 uh, plus 5 sine theta. So what we're going to do is use, again, a trig identity on this one. So we can say cos squared theta plus sine squared theta will be equal to 1. So let's look at this right here. Just doing some rearranging, we can say now subtracting 1 and dividing by 3, x minus 1 over 3 will be equal to cos theta. If we consider this one right here, we can now subtract 2 and divide by 5. So y minus 2 over 5 will be equal to sine theta. And we can go ahead and say x minus 1 all squared over now 9 plus the y minus 2 all squared over 25 will be equal to 1. All I've done is gone ahead and squared both of these terms using now a trig identity to write x minus 1 all squared over 9 plus y minus 2 all squared over 25 is equal to 1. Okay, let's look at something else. Let's look at, uh, let's go for um, x is equal to, let's go for uh, 3, and then we'll go 3 cos theta, and we'll say minus 2. Let's say that y is equal to 3 sine theta plus 4. So let's consider what we could write this now as adding the 2 to both sides and dividing by 3. x plus 2 over 3 will be equal now to cos theta. This one right here, we could say y minus 4 over 3 is equal to sine theta. Again, telling the examinator cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. We can go ahead and say that this will be x plus 2 all squared over 9 plus y minus 4 all squared over 9 is equal to 1. This will give us x plus 2 all squared plus y minus 4 all squared is equal to 9. That gives us a circle center minus 2 comma 4 radius 3. So that's just a straightforward circle. And as you can see, often rather than plotting values, if you were asked to sketch this, converting to Cartesian form could be an option. Okay, let's do one more and we'll look, let's go for x is equal to 3 sine theta, and then we'll say y is equal to, let's go for sine squared 2 theta. Okay, we know that sine 2 theta, so let's write this here, sine 2 theta will be equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. So let's consider what we've got here. We can say now that y will be equal now. If we square this term right here, we're going to get 4 sine squared theta cos squared theta. So if I consider now that x over 3, let's just look at this one, x over 3 is going to be equal to sine theta. Therefore, we can say x squared over 9 will be equal to sine squared theta. So let's plug this in here. y is equal to 4 lots now of sine squared theta, which is x squared over 9. Now we know as well that cos squared theta is going to be equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So now for cos squared theta, we can say it's going to be 1 minus this value right here. So multiplied by 1 minus x squared over 9. So that gives us now that y is equal to 4 sine squared theta cos squared theta, and we simply express it like so. Now, if you wanted to tidy this up, we could write y is equal to 4 over 81. We'd have now x squared multiplied by 9 minus x squared. All I've done here is combine the denominators and just written this fraction slightly differently. So that's what we'd end up having, and we could deal with any particular problems if we were asked to work with that. So there we go, converting our parametric equations to Cartesian form.